So it's been a little bit over a year now since I started working in my, well, what will become my new man cave. And we are standing here uh, in the shop area and there are multiple areas and I will give you a guided tour when everything is ready. I thought uh, I should start bringing down uh, the first equipment from my old lab um, to this new place, starting with the K40 laser. And I thought when I start moving things, I should also improve on certain things. What I need, really need to improve is um, the way I um, store my cooling liquid because um, I made a few mistakes. I made an, a video two years back and you guys gave me a lot of comments about what I made wrong. And uh, you were absolutely right. And I should make, uh, make it better when I move to a new place. And also if you just received your K40 laser and you're asking yourself, how or what should I use in order to um, get my cooling liquid stored? This video could be quite interesting. Uh, first off, how much cooling liquid do we need for our K40 laser? Well, um, it says that um, you should at least use like 20 liters or five gallons of water um, in order to keep your laser cooled. Uh, I use 10 liters uh, or two and a half gallons until now. So um, that causes the water to heat up over a while and uh, when it starts getting warm, you really see the laser decreases in intensity and it starts really to get uh, trouble to cut through even thin wood. So I definitely need a reservoir that is way bigger than that. Uh, I thought about at least five or seven gallons of water. Uh, then you guys mentioned that uh, a big mistake I made was I used a clear plastic um, container uh, and uh, of course when there's light coming in there will be algaes growing in there and to prevent that you should use a light tight container so something that is uh, completely sealed off uh, against any entering light. Um, the other thing is um, for my taste I need something uh, well of course that fits in here and also something that um, cannot be uh, knocked over very easily. I uh, pulled out my car last week and I found something that I thought would be the perfect thing. It's a jerry can for oil change on your car. So um, that was quite an old thing my dad bought. Uh, it was a jerry can with a big lid on the side. You can uh, unscrew and then you can put it underneath your car when you drain the oil. And I thought, well, that's ideal. So I can drill some holes in there, uh, put uh, the pump in there and everything. And um, after that, uh, I can just pull it out and uh, go and, and, and clean it out. Um, on a second thought, I thought, well, that's a pretty bad idea because when you uh, pull it out, um, the water will drain out of the uh, holes you drill into um, the lid. Then I thought, well, there's another um, way people that are machining, they often here in Europe, they use um, these Euro boxes and you get this, this is a, a flat one, but you get them um, this high. And um, well, they are um, light proof and um, you get lids to put on top of it and you can drill your holes in there for all your uh, requirements. But the thing is, uh, I thought, well, when you have to take this out, um, first of all, it will be very heavy because you will have like uh, seven or eight gallons of water. It will swap around and I, I don't know. I, it, it was just not the thing I wanted. Then there was Nicholas, um, one of my subscribers and um, follow us on Instagram and uh, he sent me pictures of his awesomely tuned K40 machine and he uses a, a cooler, a beer cooler in order to retain the cooling liquid which is quite a nice idea because you can open it easily, you have access to everything, you have a handle, you can take it out. Um, so I, I was standing in the store um, in front of them and I, I thought well hmm that would be a great idea and then I thought well isn't it that a cooler is made in order to keep things cool or in order to keep things warm. So when you put something warm in there, it will remain warm for quite a while. And uh, as long it is uh, not an active cooled um, cooler, you know, the ones you can plug into the, uh, to the mains. I went to another store and um, as this video is uh, shot in August, um, well, um, the farmers are starting recolting um, the grapes and apples and things like this here. So a lot of these stores, they now sell those plastic barrels in order to make wine and I thought well that could be a perfect thing actually because first of all um, it is plastic, it is uh, food grade, um, it is uh, airtight, it is light tight, you have it is easy to open, you have a very big lid. It's a very easy thing to clean because you have so much space so you can just swipe it out. I can simply drill two holes here, three holes, one for electricity for the pump and the two for in and outlet of the, the water. Um, I can close this up, I can screw this on top. So the swivel point is quite low. And, uh, additionally to this, I bought me some of uh, these pass-through adapters. So uh, I simply have to drill a hole 
and then uh, you stick this little thing through the plastic and you can uh, counter uh, screw this with this nut, with this bolt. And um, I got me some hose, I was not able to find black hoses because you get black silicon hoses which will be ideal because they will black out the light as well. I found this green stuff which I think also blocks out some of the UV and some of the light. First of all I have to rip everything out of my old man cave uh, that looks like an well an apocalyptic uh, bunker. I should order a container. Man this sucks. I made the mistake again and I used metal fittings um, and you see that's where all this slime comes from. By the way, um, a lot of you ask me what kind of pump I'm using. I'm using a TIP, TIP WP750S, um, that's a German brand, but you see um, in my hands about the size of this pump. It's not the smallest kind of pump you can find. Um, it's a mid-range, it's not terribly expensive. It has 15 watts, seven, 750 liters per hour. It's a 220 volts. Uh, uh, main pump. Now in order to drill plastics uh, I'm usually not using uh, standard drill bits because they tend to get caught in the material and then they rip up this uh, this whole thing and um, you will never get a clean hole and especially on acrylics it tends to break the acrylic. So I use one of these step bits or step drills. Perfect holes. So I drilled the three holes, I mounted um, everything in there and this is actually all there is to it so I can reassemble the whole system. Now I got asked uh, plenty of times how I proceed, like what comes first in, um, in the whole row of uh, cooling. So um, I start, well, of course, with the pump. The pump pumps the water straight into the laser tube. Uh, through the laser tube, when it comes out, it will hit this flow indicator. And when you just got you um, a new um, K40 laser, um, this is probably something you really want to invest uh, into. Um, it's not terribly expensive. Um, you get these on eBay. This is out of a PC water cooling system. You find all the needing parts uh, there. And um, as afterwards, when when all the air is out of the hose, we won't be able to see if there is any flow going on in our system. And it is quite important that there is a constant water flow that runs through the laser. After it hit it, um, the flow indicator, it runs through a air-cooled uh, radiator. Also a PC uh, water cooling uh, air cooler. I got this stuff from China, quite cheap. And after that, it would drain back into our barrel. Uh, I went a step further and in the previous video I um, showed you how I built a flow indicator uh, which is a little box and uh, it has a sensor that senses the flow rate of our water and when it hits a certain threshold or it stays under a certain threshold the system automatically shuts off the laser tube um, just to prevent any problems or the laser tube from burning out. Now um, with that said I think I can reassemble the whole thing so I will open this up. Now first thing I need to do is I would need to cut a piece of hose of pipe that uh, goes to my pump. I leave a little bit extra and um, after that of course this cable it is quite long and uh, it hurts a little because I have to cut it. Now I have to cut it in order to pass it through this uh, strain relief. Um, of course we want to cut it on this end because if I want to use this pump anywhere else one day and I would cut it here, um, I would not be able to submerge it really. glycol um, which is especially for um, industrial heaters. Um, you add a little bit and uh, it will prevent the water from, from uh, 
getting smelly and, and um, just, yeah, develop too much algae and stuff. Um, I made pretty good experience with this stuff because um, every time I um, swapped the water, it never was stinking like, like foul water does, like a pond or something. It always smelled like old water, but um, not, at, not as disgusting as you would think having water standing uh, somewhere for half a year or something. So um, this stuff is quite uh, to be recommended when you use your laser. I know some of you prefer just to use water, other they use other kind of stuff. Uh, I use glycol, I made, as I said, good experiences with it. Um, I found this uh, in a local home improvement store, I'm pretty sure you get this everywhere in the world. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think in the, in the US you find it for boats as well, for boat uh, uh, cooling uh, systems uh, uh, use this kind of additive. And um, yeah, so I think um, now it's just time to throw everything in there. As I said, I washed out this thing beforehand. Also, I again cleaned the pump. So, 20 liters of water are in. Now, need a, a dash, a splash of um, this glycol stuff. You see the stuff is a neon yellow, so um, you really see it mix in with the water. We don't need much, maybe like a 100 milliliters on 20 liters of water um, is fine, from my opinion. That's all I, uh, I put in there. Now, uh, yeah, so time to close the lid. Bye bye, my little pump. In. Um, this laser has a couple of potential dangers, as I made this video about uh, laser safety uh, also some years back. Uh, it's not only like the laser beam that is invisible and will blind you in a fraction of a second. Uh, there's very high voltage in there, there's water involved in there, there's like everything dangerous in, is involved into a K40 laser cutter, so you should always know what, you, what you're doing. So how did I... coming from the laser back to the cooling reservoir. We definitely need a piece of pipe draining the water into the water uh, reservoir, underneath the water line, simply because due to the capillary action and due to the uh, reservoir being um, lower than the rest of our system, as soon as I turn down or turn off the pump, uh, the whole system drains um, because this is not submerged under the water line. Uh, we definitely don't want any air in the system. So when we drain all the air, what takes a bit of time to get it out, or get all the air bubbles out of the laser tube and everything, we need the system to remain filled all the time. So we add this little piece of pipe to this outlet here, make sure that this lies underneath the water line and we should be good to go. I like this system. We can close this thing and open it without taking it even out of the of the shelf. So I will plug this in right now. And let's see if we have some flow. I don't think you can see this, but there is a very little amount of residue down there probably some uh, algae or whatever. Uh, and also to get rid out of the, um, rid of the air bubbles, uh, a lot of you guys um, said, well, you unscrew this and you turn around the tube in order to get rid of them, what is actually working. But on the other hand, you have to recalibrate the laser tube and everything. And as I am lazy and I have all my lasers secured still from transport, I can carefully just lift the whole system up and drain the air out of the system. Sometimes I use the squeeze technique by just simply squeezing on the on the very soft silicon hose. You see that I can stop the flow and then uh, when I release it quickly, it sometimes it gives it a little push to push out some of the air bubbles. Last but not least, yesterday evening I installed my K40 cooling guard in order to finish up my new cooling system and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, it is way better now that everything is screwed into the wall. Of course, the exhaust fan uh, or pipe is still missing, but I still need to drill a hole in the wall. That will come um, later, but for now, I'm pretty happy that this works. However, um, as I'm shooting these videos over a time span of a week or so, this morning I came in here and I noticed that the entire system drained. 
Well, that means there must be air coming in somewhere, and I think the only place where that can happen is here, on the left on the, or on the right of my flow indicator, because um, I forgot to put on some pipe clamps. So I will do that and uh, see if that works better. Worst case, if you have the same issue, you can always go ahead and add a check valve, like one of these valves that just drains liquid into one direction. So, um, because my theory is, I think that the water drains back on the pump side so it runs through the pump into the reservoir and putting a check valve in between would stop that. A while back I opened a Discord server. Discord is a web page where people like you and I can join chat rooms talking about things um, you saw on my channel. Especially of course about the K40. You can answer and ask questions about the K40 without being scared of getting cold names. Because <laughs> over the last years of making those videos I had to read and scroll through hundreds of forums concerning the K40 or related to the K40 laser and um, I noticed that there are uh, four categories of people in there most of the time and first of all you have the pros, you have the guys who are working with $500,000 units, fiber lasers cutting steel, you have the semi-pros that own a Trotec laser at home for, for like fourteen or $20,000. Um, you have the theorists that own nothing, but they apparently know everything about the K40 and everything how to do it and how to not do it and calling you names for asking questions. And then you have us, the enthusiasts, the guys who are actually just buying this thing um, and try to do the best with it. Of course we are limited. It's a very cheap machine, but it's still pretty awesome and you can do awesome stuff with it. And um, that's why I made this server, because I want a platform where the enthusiasts can ask questions and talk about things without getting cold names and, you know, just uh, be productive and creative. That's, that's the main goal you want when you <laughs> buy yourself a K40 laser. However, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can always subscribe and ring the bell, this little thing, and uh, give it a thumbs up. Always helps me out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, a nice shout out and hello to my only Patreon, Techie Steve. I hope you're good. And uh, I see you on the next video. Until then, see ya.